So our next speaker uh, is Arash Khojaste. And Arash is a final year medical student. And he has been working with us during the last three years. And he's one of the kind of examples of uh, brilliant medical students or kind of PhD students who are interested to be involved in the process. And that is one of the policies that we have in the Arisam Global Expert Network to bring in young, kind of talented students and try to promote them to help them to be kind of a kind of main leaders in the field, hopefully in the future. So that is kind of one of the, the activities that we do. And Arash will give you an idea about the things that he's, he's doing. And I'm hopeful that would be a kind of a, an kind of introduction to encourage other labs and other PIs around the world to kind of do the same. And this is one of the kind of the things that we'll discuss at the end in terms of how to promote young investigators in the field. Arash, please. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Thierry. Hello, everyone. I'm very humbled to be here today on uh, this panel as a representative of ISAM Global Expert Network Assistant Officers uh, on behalf of all of them on here. So it's a really good, great opportunity for me. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, more details of structures of ISAM Global Expert Network and how um, experts in the eviction field can really contribute to this network. So before I get started, uh, this is a slide that Dr. Thierry also shared with you. Here you may find more detailed information about um, almost everything I'll discuss, um, details of ISAM Global Expert Network structure, how you can contribute, and basically everything. So I, I will also share this slide uh, at the end of my presentation as well, if you wanna just uh, scan that again. Following what Dr. Uh, Professor Potenza mentioned, Let's go back to the first days of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, it was then that International Society of Addiction Medicine, ISAM, announced a call uh, for uh, actually doing a survey to assess how things are going on within the field of addiction uh, at the early stages of the pandemic. Um, that was where uh, the fundamental uh, infrastructure of ISAM Global Expert Network were actually uh, rooted. As some obvious and clear rationals behind this rapid response of ISAM uh, were the facts that of course substance use and addict addictive disorders are um, a global phenomena uh, which are all multifaceted and also dynamic spatial temporal trajectories with being highly sensitive to higher sense uh, systematic changes. So uh, adding to that there are uh, COVID happened and ISAM decided to have a rapid response to see what's going on from the frontline addiction experts who were actually doing the first line uh, treatment uh, for people with substance use disorder. Uh, so that, that's, when, uh, that's what the rationale behind the survey and basically the global expert network was. Uh, as Professor Potenza mentioned, there was a rapid formation of a working group in the early days of the pandemic. Uh, we had almost around 177 experts from, from uh, 77 uh, countries around the world and the survey covered uh, different topics around substance use treatment and harm reduction services, supply of illicit substances, and demand for illicit, illicit substances. Um, this is also uh, the map uh, that uh, shows actually the countries that were involved in this survey. Uh, uh, and as you can see, um, it, it's a heated map. We had a different kind of different number of experts from different parts of the world involved. And these are the two publications that we had from that survey. You can scan that and have the um, paper on your mobile phones. We actually discussed about the results, as Professor Potenza mentioned, about how drug use was uh, actually uh, differentiated in the, uh, when COVID happened, how drug prices actually had uh, different reactions to what COVID was doing to the world. And this is also um, one of the um, maps that we had, that is a snapshot of reporting of the severity of being affected generally by COVID-19 outbreak um, among people with substance use disorders across participating countries around the world. Uh, these are also other figures that we have in, the, um, uh, in those papers. I'm not gonna go through the details just to give you uh, some idea that how we reported the results. That was uh, when we, uh, after successfully conducting the COVID survey, with all the limitations that it had, ISAM colleagues started to think of proactively somehow prepare an infrastructure for similar sim circumstances which require rapid responses globally, spe especially when we have scarcity of data uh, like what COVID did. 
So this is where the initial steps were taken for structuring a network of ISAM of global uh, experts in addiction. So we can reach out to them whenever we need, uh, whenever uh, it is required. But before we get started with ISAM Global Expert Network Structured, uh, we should acknowledge and emphasize on valuable similar efforts, including ones by WHO, UNODC, SAMHSA, EMCDDA, and other instructions. Generally speaking, um, these efforts are some national, some regional, and others is government-based, government um, rather than being more expert-centered internationally. But ISAM Global Ex Expert Network would definitely build upon their efforts and looks forward to collaborations in the road ahead that it has. So some of the points that may distinguish ISAM Gen in different aspects um, include firstly its network of experts, which are core key players in its surveys and projects, which I'll discuss more about later. Um, and all, all of the, the, the methodologies will be based on expert elicitation methods. Um, second um, would be the fact that many of these experts are considered to be frontline addiction um, treatment practitioners in different levels from individuals, societies, and treatment centers. Um, another import, important point would be the, the possibility of using ISAM Gen platform, both for the experts and the investigators as an open source uh, for bringing in proposals. So I will also discuss about this later that how different levels of individuals, uh, societies, and treatment centers can actually participate in this network. So skipping through the rationals behind the formation of ISAM Gen, um, since from the beginning, ISAM Gen aimed to address an open list of questions in the field, um, generally based on expert consensus, as I mentioned. Um, these questions may include topics on um, drug demand and drug supply, whether it's around prevalence or patterns of use and availability, accessibility, purity, price, and so on. Um, and other questions to cover are um, different aspects of drug-related harms, um, such as health-related, health um, social-related, le legal-related problems, and economical-related harms. And of course, policy-making priorities and attitudes would be of interest as well. Um, there are also questions around accessible health services, whether it is mental health, health services or physical health services, which are interconnected together uh, for addictive disorders, which are of main interest to also be um, questions for ISAM Global Expert Network. In terms of how ISAM Gen would be able to answer to those kinds of questions, um, different options were considered, including establishing and revising clinical categories and definitions, um, relevant outcome criteria and decision-making algorithms, um, developing consensus statements, as we already have heard about in talks of Dr. Ektiari and Dr. Potenza before, um, guidelines for clinical and public health interventions and best practices for addictive disorders, and also identifying important trends and changes in addiction medicine as perceived by addiction medicine professionals. Also, knowledge, attitude, and practice studies are also one of the other uh, methods that we can use uh, to answer the questions that we have in the network. Forecasting studies, rapid assessments, and collaborative partnerships with other uh, expert networks, not just mental related, related, maybe sometimes dual mental and physical diagnosis related networks, would also be of interest. So now if I want to begin to expand more about the formation and recruitment of experts within ISAM Gen, uh, as you can see, um, there is a core group of ISAM Regional Council, uh, which complies of regional representatives from all around the world, which are selected with the criteria um, defined by the uh, ISAM core team. Um, this group is directly involved in selecting uh, country seats um, around the world with a predefined criteria through an eligibility assessment. Um, the, the details of the criteria is available in the protocol. Um, you can see the map of regional council members here, and here is a bigger version. Um, this map is being updated right now, uh, as ISAM had its conference a month ago. Uh, as you can see, there are regional representatives across different parts of the world. Um, currently, some geographical changes in this map has happened. And on the other side, uh, affiliated and non-affiliated societies with ISAM and mailing lists and survey participants, including the COVID survey and peer recommended experts will also go through the eligibility assessments to be included in the network of ISAM Gen. 
So this is the criteria that I was mentioning. I'm not going to go through the details because it's a long list of criteria. Um, and you can find it in more detail in the protocol. So um, in terms of the organizational hierarchy within the ISAM gen, a steering committee has been formed, including three secretaries, uh, Professor Potenza and Professor uh, Ekdiari included, along a current president of ISAM, Professor Alex Baldacchino, uh, along a group of experts from different regions around the world as the steering committee members. Um, this group is interconnected with the ISAM board of directors, an external advisory board, um, external um, institutes and agencies, ISAM regional council, which I mentioned earlier, and a group of assistant officers, myself included here, in order to help better functioning the uh, whole network. And this is how the ISAM gen hierarchy completes with having the experts within the ne network in two divisions of regional committees and different discipline committees. And here is a visually designed figure of the core members, including the secretaries, the steering committee, and assistant officers. Um, again, you can see the, uh, that even the team of the steering committee and also the assistant officers are distributed to a good extent between different corners around the world. So uh, we may uh, have the variety of people from all, from all around the world in the team. Now, if I want to expand more about the levels of expert involvement within ISAM Gen projects, we can roughly divide it to three main groups, including individual experts, societies and associations, and treatment centers. We have already started uh, to recruit the first two groups. Uh, as you, uh, If you have been in our mailing list, you have received mails from ISAM Global Expert Network, whether from an individual point of view or a society point of view. And um, we are also working to put together uh, the infrastructures for gathering treatment centers around the world in the long run. As the first group, around 50 addiction societies and associations have already joined the network and are included in our database. Um, here we can visually see the distribution of those societies um, with an estimation, uh, estimation of the number of members in each of them. We actually reach out to the societies uh, and ask them to provide us with some information about their societies, like uh, the year of establishment, how, how many members do they have, how, what types of activities do they have, and we already have that in our database, and it will be published soon. Here's also the map of our first wave of expert recruitment, um, which is continu continuing in further rounds of screening and processing still. Um, as you can see, many countries around the world have already experts in the database, but the, the Google form is all, uh, now open. I will also share the share and QR code at the end of my slides, which you can also join uh, the network. Well, um, now I'm going to briefly talk about how projects are defined in ISAM Gen. Um, so as similar as everywhere, um, everything starts with making a proposal, which can be prepared by any of the levels of experts, which I mentioned. This may include the steering committee members, relevant committees, assistant officers, societies, um, funding institutes, as well as treatment centers. And after the proposal, there will definitely be an evaluation process, which involves the steering committee of, of ISAM Gen and the relevant committees which are involved in that specific project. And as the final point, the, final, uh, the funding acquisition will be made upon the supervision of ISAM Board of Directors, um, plus if it involves external funding sources as well. And after the proposal has been made, uh, the protocol design process would happen with the involvement of uh, proposing parties and other relevant groups, which will lastly result in mainly expert surveys and consensus studies, um, leading to final products, such as guidelines and ward addiction medicine reports. So in summary, um, this would be the process flowchart of ISAM Gen, uh, which I discussed in the previous slides altogether, which includes the recruitment process, organization, project definition, project development and implementation, and finally, the, pro the products. But aside all these structurals and fundamental things, what else we have done till now? Fo following the initial inspirational idea of ISAM Gen, which rooted from networking through the COVID-19 pandemic era, uh, with adaptations with virtual meetings and webinars, we also started to put together a set of internal meetings between the assistant officers um, in order to discuss and learn more around the topic of scientific methods 
uh, in running global surveys and doing expert elicitations. We basically wanted to know um, how rigorously can we extract data from experts in the network. So we review the most cutting edge metho methodologies together in, in a group of talk series between the assistant officers, which were basically more the junior researchers who are involved in the team. This effort led to putting together an online, which uh, online now publicly available workshop on expert elicit elicitation as a research tool with inviting many experts from um, different various um, um, fields of science, from environmental sciences, to political sciences, uh, who were uh, somehow involved the cutting edge methodologies of expert elicitation. We basically invited them to uh, give us uh, some talks, ideas on how uh, we can rigorously do this within the diction sciences. And you may find the recording of the webinar by scanning the QR code on ISAM YouTube channel. And we also had uh, a symposium on ISAM 2022 conference last month in Malta um, discussing milestones and further steps together uh, with the network in person. As part of the protocol of ISAM Gen, and as the first step to begin the surveys after the initial COVID survey that we had, uh, the ISAM group decided to run a pilot survey on treatment service provision for opioid use disorders as an emerging issue in the field. So the, the pilot survey uh, has been designed in two distinct phases with uh, various question types. Uh, we have already gone through the uh, first phase uh, within the contact point of the societies for now. We are now planning also to run the second phase and also the expert-centered survey in the upcoming uh, weeks. This survey has different domains covering aspects related to opioid use prevalence, treatment, and harm reduction. Um, this is also the behind the scene showing how we are managing the societies while responding to the first survey. Uh, and this is the database of our currently societies which we have in our database. And here we are. Uh, almost uh, at my final slides, but one big question still remains. How to contribute? Well, the answer is very simple for now at least. Uh, you can go ahead and scan this QR code and fill out the expert recruitment form that we have for now. Uh, it won't take longer than two or three minutes. Um, and this will help us to keep uh, keep you posted with all the things that we have in the network going on and have you in the database of the experts that we already have in ISAM Gen. And this would be the most important QR code to scan in case you missed those before. Before I finish, here's also a simple draft of proposed topics and related contact points that which we are, are planning to run different projects upon within the network. Um, as you see, um, it already contains different topics such as opioid use disorder, which is the pilot survey that we are running, medication assistant treatment standards, psychiatric comorbidities, physical comorbidities, stimulant services, cannabis services, quality standards, burnout in addiction physicians, and displaced populations. And as my final slide again, as I promised at the beginning, here is the link to the ISAMGEN protocol, which is available online as a preprint for now, and you may find more detailed information inside if you wish to do so. Thank you very much for your attention.